Alright, good evening everyone. Today's segment is how to improve and this is being rebroadcast from my channel Rillian2 underscore MK to our main 2 underscore MK channel with my full permission. As soon as I get one or two audio tests done and confirmation from the team, I'll be going right into it. So today, I'll be looking at how to use the correct settings for bots. In this case, we'll use Nash to help you understand opening gambits. This doesn't really need to be applied to just bots. You can have your friends do this, or depending on what the CPU does, you can have them. Tr you can start with the CPU and see if the CPU will use the opening gambits in question. The main thing to think about here is how to use this to improve the start of a round for you and that will allow you to make better use of the rest of your movement and the rest of your meter. Figuring out where to start is probably the most important thing in any given round of Street Fighter. Now. When you are watching a stream, if you happen to be a fan and doing that sort of thing, you will occasionally hear a commentator refer to something called an opening gambit. An opening gambit is not, however, just the use of a specific move. It is not just the move that they happened to do. An opening gambit is a specific choice that a player makes at a high level of play intended to beat the opponent's character specifically. At lower levels, people use different opening gambits. Those who are moving through the ranks often come up with one that they like. They may or may not modify it per character. So right now, we're going to look at what Nash and Ryu interact with. This lesson can be used for all sorts of things, and you can look into how to apply it to your own characters, but Nash and Ryu are being used in this case because of a specific interaction that Nash has with many characters, and therefore it hopefully will be easier to understand. The first thing I'm going to do is set one action for Nash's recording. The very first thing that a Nash can do at the beginning of a round, the bots will, if you do not put any playback recording interval, this is the recording interval here, but if you use the playback interval, the bot will do one of its actions immediately at the start of a new round or when you hit the restart battle command. So what we're going to record Nash to do is one that is relatively familiar to a lot of people and that is his Medium Kick Sonic Scythe. As you can see, Medium Kick Sonic Scythe hits relatively far in front of him. Now, it doesn't really matter where I am to do the recording part. I should try to end the recording fairly quickly after he does the Sonic Scythe itself, but it does not matter too much for this particular action. I'm just going to Sonic Scythe and end the recording. Now, this is one thing that many Nash do at the beginning of a round, but I'm going to demonstrate now what happens if Ryu tries to react to that Sonic Scythe in specific ways. So I'm going to restart battle. I have also set the shortcut command of L3 to do this. It's not necessarily immediately helpful because of needing to potentially hit directions, but you can still use it. So at the beginning of this, if we restart battle here, Nash will Sonic Scythe, and you will note, obviously he'll repeat it. But one thing that's really important here is, as you can see, Ryu doesn't have an actual response to this that will absolutely hit Nash. So this is a relatively sane thing for Nash players to do. It starts in about 10 move frames, So unless you pull out the Hadouken on the very first frame you can possibly do it, 
this is probably one of Nash's best ideas. And the game actually delays very slightly here, so you have a slight chance of moving before them. But, if you jump back, you're fine. This is the first thing to note that's important. Jumping back is one of the strongest things most people can do at the beginning of the match because they know what it is and they can hold the direction long before the match actually starts and still successfully do this. Now, if Nash realizes that your first action is to jump back away from him, he would potentially consider a different starting option. One other potential starting option for Nash is to just immediately use one of his Moonsault Kicks. This is not always a good idea. We're going to record now Nash attempting to use a Moonsault, a specific Moonsault. In this case, the medium kick Moonsault takes him about this far. Note that Moonsault is overall a very slow move. And I'm going to end the recording there even though... Well, actually no, let's try it. Let's try to be more in line with what would actually happen. Because medium kick Moonsault is actually safe and therefore Nash can basically mash crouching medium punch and hope it comes out. So with these two options now, the player can still always jump back at the beginning of a round. There's no way to be sure as the Nash player that you're going to reach a person who is doing this. If they block, you'll definitely catch them and you'll get to start your own pressure. But, it's not necessarily safe to do. Because you could get sure you can... If you do the Moonsault. But the player has to have pretty good reactions to start off in block. And still react in time to the Moonsault specifically. But now that Ryu's medium punch sure you can is invincible this isn't a good idea for Nash Ryu at least has responses many other characters have responses and as shown before if you simply bat jump this will not hit you so what is the thing that Nash is probably looking to do if the Nash player is pretty sure that you are going to jump back away from him well Let's look at what happens if Nash dashes forward twice. Let's see how far he can get. And I'm ending the recording slightly early. It will buffer any further moves into it. I'm also turning off the Moonsault and only leaving the Sonic Scythe. In fact, I'm going to turn them both off and show just what happens when Nash dashes twice. Now that's not so bad. But it's not really that useful either. Ryu's jump frames are not so slow that he has to worry about anything happening to him specifically at the end of Nash's second dash. But if you are someone who understands frame data, you will see that, technically speaking, Nash should be almost at advantage when he comes out of that dash. Now, I'll turn back on this action and we're going to hope that Nash at some point does action 1 into action 3 and we'll see what happens then I will continue to jump back with Ryu and block so you can see that Ryu has lots of time to block there But that means the question becomes, well, can Nash actually dash once and do anything? Let's try re-recording action 3 as just one dash. 
I ended a little too early, so I'll do it again. That probably is correct. So now I need to give Nash the option of doing a Moonsault after that single dash. Ryu still has lots and lots of time to block. So you don't have anything that you can specifically lose out on here. Let's give Nash, therefore, a slightly better option. Just to do his sweep and then attempt to block more. Well, if the Ryu player is just jumping back and the Nash player is just dashing forward once and doing sweep, what should happen? I seem to have delayed my sweep too long, so let's re-record that. And return to the show off. As you can see, if you're standing in a regular position, Nash has basically no chance of dashing up and actually hitting you with sweep. But he could uh, still attempt to dash twice. Ryu's back jump covers a lot of ground, Nash's dash doesn't cover that much ground. So, if we look at Nash's other options overall, he could try dashing more, but this just puts him at a severe disadvantage because Ryu can always jump back and get away. However, if Ryu does jump back, what has he really gained? Has he won out in the situation somehow? Because if he jumps backward and they are in approximately the same space, does this mean that Ryu can now do something to defeat Nash with? Well, let's give Nash one more option. And that is to use the heavy kick, Moonsault instead. And I should probably record that at a range where it is likely to actually hit. So I can do that. And now, we will make Nash able to dash and use Heavy Kick Moonsault. And we'll see what happens to Ryu. Oh, but wait. If you use Heavy Kick Moonsault, can you hit Ryu? It looks as if, unless you are really ready, you will hit Ryu, but really ready is a thing. If your very first action is to jump, especially if your action is to jump again, but note that this doesn't really work that way. If you hesitate even a moment at the beginning of this, Nash's Moonsault will hit you. And yet, if you are ready, I believe it does in fact work. Now I can let Nash beat us, beat you up and then figure it out because the restart battle timing is different. Unfortunately, like I said, you have to do certain tests with probably with friends. But if we look at just the range, The question is, do we assume that Ryu got a head start? It doesn't look like it. Seems to me that, relative to the input I could have done, in fact the game's being really lenient so it even skips one input for me. Basically as soon as Ryu can jump, he does jump. In fact, if you've ever looked into it, the very first input can get lost altogether. It is very important to be able to do this, 
to just hold up back at the beginning of a round. But if you do this, then you have to question whether or not you're at advantage anymore. So for now, I'm going to change it so that Nash only does the Moonsault, obviously. More helpful. And let's try to find out what Ryu can do immediately after. Well, if he's out of range, then he's fine. Note that if I delay, if I wait for the battle to seem to start, and I hold that button, it will take frames too long and I will die. However, what happens if I stand completely still? It's not a great gambit for Nash if I stand completely still. It goes over. This is why spacing matters in these ways. But Ryu doesn't want to stand completely still. Against Nash, that is relatively risky. So he should probably try to do something. If you learned that you can definitely jump back away from him most of the time, if not all of the time, and make it, then why ever do anything else? And you'll note that the crouching medium punch that comes afterwards doesn't necessarily hit either. It does hit if Ryu is crouching, but it doesn't hit if Ryu is just standing there. This is a m very important part of spacing, but it does change the startup of the match quite a lot. If you are paying attention to your character's abilities, most of the time there is something they can do, an option at the beginning of the round, that is really important to them. So what I'm going to do now is give Nash full critical gauge. Maximum start is probably fine for what I'm trying to do. And rather than keep his double dash, actually at this point I really don't mind which ones I overrun. But let's take this one, which is a single dash, forward dash, and replace it with... Is this actually forward? I really have not played this character enough. Oh, no, I didn't reset that. So let's record this action. There we go. So for now, I actually need to put it on infinite and go back to recording it. I probably don't need to actually put more than that at the moment. So we're going to turn this on because this is what matters. If Nash actually has full meter and the Nash player has noted that you jump back every single time, what will they try to do? Oh, it appears they're fine. That you're fine. He doesn't reach in time. But if you're the sort of person that hits buttons at the beginning, or throws Hadoukens, or has basically stood there every time and tried to stop him from doing something, But there's a new interesting piece of information. At that range, with a certain reaction, due to Ryu's invincibility and the space that Nash stands at, if you're really good at Shoryuken, this isn't a good opening gambit for Nash either. Now I haven't given Ryu any meter. And you can see that mashing certain things can make your action off by just a frame or two. And even walking forward a tiny amount while you're prepping to do a move has the same effect. If your reaction is really good though, really, really good, 
that move is simply not scary. Your opponent could start the round with it every time they have full meter. And if you get hit, it's probably your fault, not theirs. Given where we start, what we're trying to learn here is something relative to spacing that is really easily demonstrated by watching the very beginning of a match. The very beginning of a match always has the exact same space, and therefore all the options available to the players are basically determined by how much meter they have and what opposing character is playing, rather than anything else. This is not the same in regular neutral, but it's just a matter of learning more spaces. Today, therefore, we're starting with just the one space as the way of understanding this. So if I give Nash the ability to use the Light Kick and the Moonsault, my overall response should still be the same. Just jump away. But what does that mean for Ryu? Has Ryu gained anything by jumping away from Nash? No. In fact, unless he's very, very skilled in terms of reaction, or the Nash player doesn't know that you can do certain things space-wise, it's fine either way. Now, as mentioned before, if Ryu did just stand there, or potentially just block, crouch block, let's say, he actually has basically nothing to worry about. He could get ready to throw attack after a dash, that sort of thing. Nash's options relative to Ryu at start are pretty good for Ryu if Ryu plays defensively. That's the primary thing. But, let's go one step further now and give Nash, since he already has meter, let's change his Moonsault to be an ES Moonsault. That should be enough for now. Still misses. In fact, he's slightly more likely to miss. And hurt himself, too, if you know what you're doing. What this means is that unless Nash can figure out a way to beat Ryu's actions of blocking or simply jumping backward, he doesn't have a lot of things that he gains at the beginning of any given round, except to take the space that Ryu gives up by jumping backward. So as a Nash player, if you assume that the Ryu player is going to jump back because it is supposedly the best option, the question becomes, can you find a way to hit them? The answer is probably no. And if you could find a way to hit them, what would you want to hit them with? Well, we're going to go back to slot 1, and we're going to use dash up once, and then try to do something. Let's try one medium sight. Because that is quite long range, and it does go fairly far. A jump is a long-ish period of time. That starts faster than a dash does. Well, actually more accurately, it comes into contact faster than a dash does. So, with just this on, we're going to try and see what happens to Ryu if he jumps back from this one. Oh, wait, now we have a problem. It's not even like you can get out of it by pressing faster. So, this is terrible for you, because now he's like pushed almost all the way back to the corner already. You could delay the jump and then everything will be fine. But we know what happens if you delay the jump. Well, probably not with that one. 
No, nope, here too. It's not as good because Nash may not get much damage, so you might want to try delaying the jump. But you're still going to get hit, and you're still going to get knocked down, and this is kind of important. So, the other option is to do something about Nash dashing at you. Maybe just block. Is there anything that Nash can do that easily beats the concept of just block? Let's record action 2 as dash in and throw. And we're going to turn on the playback of that alone. Ah. Oh look! Usefully, Nash's single dash alone, with no other actions, doesn't even reach Ryu. So that's not really a threat, is it? You would have to try to press something. You have to try to react to Nash's dash by hitting a button or something, and then he'll grab you. Now, it may be difficult to have noticed this because many of us, when we see someone dash at us at the beginning of a round, even, we, will, we are going to hit a button. But usefully, since you have to be crouching for this to matter, it really doesn't come up. You could just throw out the jab long before that, but we remember what the problem with just throwing out the jab is, right? You can't do it when Nash has full meter. If the Nash every time dashes up and tries to throw you, and every time you hit them with something or try to, when they get full meter, they have the option at that point of just hitting super. And this can be really bad for you depending on where you are in the setup. They also have the option, if you definitely make sure you hit the button every time, of potentially trying the medium kick or of, let's give back just his medium kick side. That's moves out. So now I have to decide whether or not I'm going to sit quietly and wait for Nash to come up to me or am I going to hit a button. I see Nash move forward and I can't tell between the, diff the difference between these two and there's a whole thing about timings and options so that's in special stuff that you can set up. But for the most part, if you just go, okay, I'm going to hit jab. There's a specific timing at which hitting jab helps you, and a lot of timings where it doesn't. And you can't just mash jab as soon as you start and beat both things most of the time. Because if you mash jab, that's something you learn very quickly in this game. Mashing a button changes some interactions in very slight ways, but still enough to be a problem. If you hit the jab based on a timing that you think you understand, and you hit like the one perfect frame in here, there is a frame on which you can punch him out of that. But most of us don't know that frame. Pros are the sort of people that will learn that frame. Like, they'll know exactly how long from the beginning of a match they need to mash jab to hit him out of sight. Seems to me as if you do it really fast, it works out most of the time. But I bet this doesn't work for characters with only four frame jabs. Or maybe really short range jabs. Or chainable buttons that don't work the right way. And it doesn't work with that. So you've got to think about everything that your opponent can do and what you can do as a response. But again, we're only going with the concept of the opening gambit where everything starts at the exact same frame, unless you are mashing, and everything relies on either your reaction to the fight sound of the beginning of a round 
Or, depending on if it's just a direction that you're holding, you can just hold a direction before that. How fast you can input something affects an opening gambit rather heavily. So let's go over it again. If Ryu mashes jab and Nash has full meter, eventually something bad will happen. Because you'll know it doesn't work on that either. Now, a better player will realize what's going on, but actually, maybe I'm not good enough, but figuring out what exactly to do, that will work. But stand jab also doesn't reach as far, so you have to mash more, you have to expect certain things to happen. But it looks like just mashing jab helps a bit. But again, when you mash, the outcome becomes unpredictable. And when the outcome becomes unpredictable, your opponent doesn't have any real reason to not use the gambit. As far as they're concerned, if you're willing to bet it, they'll bet it too, especially since they're the one only getting hit by a jab. And as you'll know, the damage done by certain things that Nash can do isn't that tiny, so he has a decent reason to do this. But, as mentioned before, let's re-record it in 4, unless I already did. Let's see what action 4 actually is before I go doing extra work. That's the sweep. Okay. That's probably not input as quickly as it could be, but we don't mind. Now we're just going to leave that one on by itself. Mashing jab here is a terrible, terrible idea. In fact, depending on my timing, I have to realize something is happening and hope that I'm not in a particular part of my jab animation. However, fortunately, if I am blocking and the jab is not in a certain animation frame, as soon as I see that, I stop jabbing, and I have the chance to block it. But, a player with perfect input timing would probably not even have that tiny space of moving backward that would matter. And again, jab? There's no specific reason to try to use this on jab unless you are pretty sure you're going to hit and your opponent's weird. The aim for the Nash, therefore, is to find an opening or a pair of openings that Ryu must quote unquote guess he can't get out of it or if he does get out of it, then somehow Nash comes out on top. So we're seeing that if you jump back, the dash and throw means nothing to you, but the dash scythe will hit you basically every time. And Ryu no longer has the ability to alter his jump arc in that way. But wait, maybe we can kick him. We can kick him! Well that's much better to learn, isn't it? In fact, obviously I'm just going to turn on one by itself. And Ryu's perspective should be, well, I should just jump back and kick every time then, because it's not even going to hurt me. What can Nash even do from here? I'm not in any danger at all. So the Ryu player now has yet another thing that they have learned based on spacings and how their opponent's movements lead into damage. If they always jump back, then the Nash player is likely to dash. Why are they likely to dash? Because it doesn't really harm them to do so. They can dash throw, they can dash scythe, they can dash and scythe when they see you leave the ground. In general, actually, it's not a terrible idea for Nash to dash at Ryu as a general thing, because 
the other option is to simply do medium kick scythe and since medium kick scythe was the thing that was a problem before namely the thing that forces Ryu to block at the beginning of a round it seems as if that works out fairly well so right now we have dash into medium kick scythe here in action 1 action 2 is dash and throw I believe action 3 is currently just scythe, yes So if I turn on all three of these, the question is, what is the best thing for Ryu to do? There's no specific reason why he shouldn't just jump back and heavy kick every time. There's no move that Nash does that makes him go, oh, this is a terrible idea. Now just jumping back, note from before where we were, just jumping back is potentially a really bad idea. Ryu loses a lot of space if he does it. And you can see how this goes. I mean, then you have to be ready to recover. You've taken damage and lost a life lead against a character that can easily be played as a zoner. He even has a good knockdown on medium kick scythe. Most people don't specifically know it, but he does have one. And you have to worry about this. So, what is the best opening gambit? Well, there's usually not one best opening gambit. Because once you've learned a specific opening gambit that gets you into a good position, your opponent is not going to use things that get them hit unless they are trading position for damage or the other way around. Anyone who has played chess will understand at this point why exactly it's called an opening gambit. Because in most cases, you do want to take some risk, some small risk, and you're aiming to use your understanding of the opposing player to make that risk in your favor somehow. So, so far, we know that if Ryu jumps back and uses Heavy Kick, then Nash can't do too much. So let's give Nash a dash up Moonsault. That would be good. And we'll use a medium Moonsault. I probably don't need to record more than that, really. Now, this shouldn't work. We've tested this sort of before, but does anything change because Ryu hits the button in the air? It's not necessarily intuitive when you're playing a fighting game for the first time that this sort of thing can change a matchup or change a gambit, but this is really important. These little interactions are built into the game as the product. But if you jump back immediately and kick and just block, you're fine. But that does mean something else. Can you respond in time to it? Because it is entirely possible that while you can block between the um, six frames of input lag and some other aspect of the game, you might not be able to do this. But it looks as if you can. So it's not necessarily in the Nash player's favor to do that. So you're like, okay, well, I don't care, I can still jump back and do stuff. But he has increased the chances that you won't be able to respond in time. Because you have to see him go into the sky. Can he trick you? Does Nash have another option? Well, we don't know for sure why that particular moonsault gets hit, but the ha chances are that they all get hit. Given the fact that he's in the air, I'm sure you can just work that way. But what else can we give him? Because can he make you sure you can and not hit him? If you get twitchy enough, that could be a thing. So we're going to try recording Nash to simply dash forward once, jump once, up, straight up, and then do something.
So one dash, one neutral jump upwards, and then probably super, I guess. Hmm, that's not super, but actually it has a reasoning that I will probably use it for now. Oh, wait, this is bad. The Nash player can trick me into doing a Shoryuken. And then maybe grab me? I'm not sure if their timing is good enough. Let's see that again. Go away. No! Ryu doesn't recover in time for that. Maybe if I use a different Shoryuken. Not that one. This isn't the right hero you can to use for stuff in general. But it might it might be the moonsault. So I jumped back, he dashed up and then jumped. And we could try to do it by the auditory cue. Let's try that. This is this part of this lesson where you turn to turn on both inputs. This looks fine. Except that I'm hitting this really early. At least it hits him though. But we see the problem from before. So I'm gonna try to just figure out which one he did in time to do the short game. But am I really doing this as a reaction? Probably not. Because you jump back. And remember, from the very beginning we needed to hit the kick. So now you're like, looking at all sorts of things. Now you're focusing on more things, and focusing on more things robs you of frames. If you were sure he was going to do that, then by all means, you're set. He doesn't even have a chance, really. But you're not sure he's going to do that. Fortunately, we know that that will work no matter what, in terms of 1. So if we get the timing down for hitting the kick for 1, we're good. All we need to do is then not do anything when he does that. Great! Oh wait, um, now I'm doing 3 things, and now I have to- uh, oh wait. How do I stop the Moonsault? Because Moonsault is the bigger problem. I don't want to get hit by Moonsault. We know the space is always the same at the beginning of the round. But I don't want to get hit by the Moonsault. This is a terrible idea. And I've just realized something. Well, technically I realized it. When we started doing multiple things. We also had the option of Nash just doing a different Moonsault as the very first action he did. We no longer have much interest in the dash throw, because dash throw doesn't really work against people who are jumping back and hitting kick anyway. As soon as we learned that jump back heavy kick solves the dash up medium kick scythe problem, we discarded the concept of needing to jab anything. Because you simply have no good reason to stay there, Nash is not a character that you care about him taking space because he'll just use space to get away from you. With Ryu specifically, you don't need to do anything about this. So we no longer need to have this here. We don't care about that. We only care about a moonsault that hits when you jump back. Now we did say that if the moonsault is hitting when you jump back, and you jump immediately, it's not an issue, right? Who cares? I can just hold ba back, jump at the beginning. But, 
now that I think about it, the only reason that move whiffs is because Ryu's hurt box isn't extended. And if I use the exact same timing, I'm, I'm going to turn this one off even though I know that I technically should use the same timing here. I'm only looking to see the interactions between these two. There is a regular long moonsault and a dashing shorter moonsault. We know that I must do jump back and be ready to heavy kick in case of things. So we're just going to play those two. Oh, it looks like I'm still fine. In fact, it looks like I'm more than fine. There is a specific timing in which this doesn't work out for Nash at all. So I'm fine, everything's great, I don't have to do anything, I can just press this button whenever I want. In fact, if I'm delayed, it's even better. He takes longer to come out, gets hit. This is looking like a wonderful opening gambit for Ryu at this point. What could possibly beat the simplicity of jump back heavy kick? Does Nash even have anything that does anything about that? Well, let's see. Now, I'm no longer going to need this, but let's leave it. Let's give Nash something else. He could dash up still and do something else that might hit, but what does he have that's fast enough? He does a very slow Sonic Boom, so that's probably not the biggest threat. But we'll look at it. We should always look at these things. You can run through all these things in your mind if you know a lot of frame data. If you feel as if frame data is difficult to understand, this is probably the best way to learn things about frame data in this controlled space where the opponent is only ever doing things from a very specific range. And it is so hard to dash on it boom sometimes. Okay, we'll do that again. And probably don't need to make the recording end slowly. This should be fine, right? From everything we know so far, jump back kick is going to be okay with this. Yeah, we're good. Sonic booms are too slow for that to matter. What else does he have? Well, there's super, obviously. I guess we can check that. Dash up super doesn't seem like it would be helpful though. But, for the sake of being sure, Let's see what he does. Instant jump back. I can still block. Everything's good. Wait, can I still block if I hit the kick? No! Why can't I block if I hit the kick? Am I doing it too slow? Am I doing it too fast? Why is this going wrong? It even looks like I'm landing. Why am I landing? Because if you knew, actually, this is treated as an anti-air sometimes. So, But I can't get it done every single time. Okay, I'm jumping. I'm jumping immediately. I'm kicking the kick. Wait. Okay, wait. Now, if I don't hit kick, why don't I get hit then? Oh, but watch. Something really important happens here. If I jump immediately, note that I'm still holding up back. I never changed direction I'm holding. But Ryu blocks when I manage it in time. In fact, it never even registers that I've done anything else. I can go the entire time because the super freeze happens. And then that teaches you something. Oh wait, the super freeze happens. So it just takes the last input I was using. Oh. So, if you press no buttons, this 
basically implies that Ryu is blocking on the very first frame he hits the ground. Because you can't air block it. But there's never a frame where the game sees that Ryu has hit up back. In fact, if you were to manage to somehow hit this and let go in time, which I probably can't do, can I? You know that you do have to be holding the direction. It's not an auto block. It's not taking the last input you put in. It's just blocking. But that means that Ryu blocked on the exact frame he could do it. And the now well-known term by the latest controversy, trip guard, or as may be known in the future depending on how the creator of the term feels about it, air sweep sees, prevents him from being able to block if I hit a button in the air. It's not just the kick either. Whatever I press is going to do that. It literally doesn't matter which button I press. But we're not thinking about other buttons, we're thinking about what happens when I do this. So, a good Nash player can totally do this, because they'll just buffer the super while they're doing it. And you know what's worse? They'll buffer the super, and then if they think that you are not going to get hit by the super, they'll just hit the medium kick which will cause Scythe to come out. So they have what is considered an option select. It's not a true option select because a op true option select is only one button or one set of buttons. But buffered option select style things is when you buffer one thing and which button you hit depends on what you see from your opponent. It's just a general term of buffering, but there's another way of explaining buffering that comes up differently. The point is you can dash forward do two quarters, circle back, and then, depending on what your opponent did in the air, hit either kick, medium kick, or any punch. And now, you have an issue. So, if Nash has meter, you probably don't want to jump back against him, if he has full meter. What if he doesn't have full meter? Does he have anything that reaches? Let's see. Well, we know that the medium kick scythe reaches, but we kick him out of that, so it's fine. What else could possibly do this? Let's record over action 5 again. We will give Nash one chance to actually fully hit the thing. And begin the recording again. So we're going to dash up and attempt some other move. Let's try EX scythe. I don't need to change the playback settings. Oh, wait. But if I jump back immediately, I'm fine. So it looks like I'm fine mostly either way. But no, there's something off here. Well, this is actually because it's possible for you to hit the kick at different timings. And if he hits the kick too late, then he doesn't get hit by it. If he hits the kick early enough into the jump, he will get hit by it. It takes a while to figure out which of these things is happening and why it's happening the way it is. But there's a specific fall height at which, oh, doesn't matter, that doesn't hit me. But wait, if I hit it at that height, if I start hitting that really late so that I avoid the other problem, Am I still okay? It looks like I am. It looks as if I hit that kick really late. Nash will still get hit, and I don't get hit by ES Scythe. But, all of this relies on the idea that you immediately held up back at the beginning of the round. If you even forgot for a moment, if your opponent had beaten you in the previous round or you won really convincingly and you were feeling yourself or someone made a loud noise and caused you to look to the side, now your entire game is different and all of your opening gambits could be terrible by one or two frames difference. So 
What are we looking for from Nash's side? Nash has one real response. He can dash up and moonsault and hope that you don't respond in time. But we don't really count that. He can dash up and super and hope that you hit the kick because you should always hit the kick. But you can hit the kick fairly late. So let's try that. Let's turn on this. I could put it back to super now. Let's do that. So the playback, the correct playbacks are on. But this is difficult now because I have to. Mentally making myself not hit the kick because he might be doing it causes me to delay the kick so long that it becomes very difficult to be sure I'm going to hit him. And if I tell myself, okay, I'm not hitting the kick until I know that he's done something else. There's no way to know. By the time you can visually confirm that Nash has done one or the other, you're in trouble already. It's easier to just hit the kick every time. So as soon as Nash has meter, enough meter to dash up and do super, you can't use this gambit anymore. The obvious thing would be, well, who's going to dash up and do super? But as I said before, the super is bufferable. He doesn't really have to do it that fast. And even if he was slightly slow, mm, the chances are that he'll still do it. Because he's not confirming you hitting the kick or not hitting the kick. He's only confirming that you jumped at all. You could get away with it and make him waste the super if you were sure he was going to super. But then again, you had to jump the very first frame you could and not freak out. Still, as a Nash player, I might do it. I might risk it. Because that much life lead, that much momentum, that advantage against someone who is going to let me build back the meter anyway because that's how Nash and Ryu interact. I'm pretty sure I would dash up and try it. Or I would risk getting hit by the heavy kick because it doesn't do that much damage. But we're going to keep on looking through Nash options now. Because we know for sure that if Nash does the kick, then Ryu must kick. And if Nash does super, Ryu shouldn't kick. So we're going to discard the super for now. Does Nash have anything else? We know that the EX Scythe still misses. We know that if Nash does Moonsault or EX Moonsault, he might get a little bit if you're late, but Ryu should generally be okay. The only thing Nash really has left is either EX Sonic Boom or EX Tragedy Assault. Well, EX Tragedy Assault is an interesting move. It goes really far, but it also has this problem where it only tends to hit properly on the way up. Still, let's restart the battle and see what we get. Oh, it looks like this is fine too. I don't know whose idea what this was, but as it stands... It looks like Ryu's got a basically get out jail free card. As long as Nash doesn't have meter, you just gotta jump back and do that. The chances of the Nash being ready to do Sonic Boom, given that you can't buffer it per se, the Sonic Boom and the Medium Kick Scythe are in two different directions, so mm. But wait, we keep on talking about Medium Kick Scythe, we keep on talking about Eat Scythe. Eat Scythe missed, so. Heavy Kick Scythe should miss, right? Should. Let's double chat that though. Wait, 
Wait, wait, wait. Wait, why? No, actually, of course. It's not that complex as the white, but it would make a lot of people question what they're looking at. Because you're still beating one, but you're not beating five. What's going on? So now you mean to tell me that the opponent just has to choose which kick to hit? The EX Scythe wasn't hitting at that range. In fact, we're all pretty sure the EX Scythe wasn't hitting. But the hitboxes are different. Nash's hitbox is totally different when he's in that space. In fact, even if you delay the jump a little bit, it seems like he keeps on hitting you. This is terrible. What if I press nothing? Oh good, if I press nothing then I'm perfectly fine. But now, if I press nothing, I'm back where I started. And I don't really gain anything this way either. Wait, maybe I can hit him. Yes, yes I can hit him, that's fine. You see no counter hit, so you know that he actually was recovering. But wait, may I didn't hit him that pro time properly. But it does hit. You have to be really ready though, because the hitbox goes back fast-ish. And you can hit the button too early. So even though you would think, mm, I've checked the stuff, I'm good, I know my opening gambit again, that's Nash. The Nash player is looking for ways to hit you. They're focusing on the thing that they found the most problems with from your side. So they most likely have thought of a different way to use the situation altogether. They're not looking at it from the same perspective that you are. And that's really important in fighting games to at least try to see things from your opponent's perspective as you go along. So now we know this. Many of the things that Nash can do are summarily beaten by Ryu just jumping backwards and hitting heavy kick in the air. We know that one and so on. Uh, I probably don't need to do the break, but I will for the sake of being sensible. Because note that moves him forward, so that might make a difference a little bit. So that's on. Oh, I bat dashed in it. Fine. Nope, not again. That one should be good, I think. So, we're going back to our usual. Oh, we're perfectly fine. This doesn't even remotely cause a threat. And we have to remember to check for the trip guard, even though it looks like Ryu has all the time in the world to block. So, Eh. But the problem still stands. We know that at some point Nash was able to find a basically an option select that allows him to do this. Not only does he have an option select, well, buffered option select, he has one that if he happens to have meter, he can really hurt you. And Ryu therefore has to decide, what are my options here? Ryu's options being jump back and press nothing, jump back and press heavy kick, or try to find something that he can do at the very beginning of the match that will make the Nash player not want to do that at all. Well, dash is basically an extremely unsafe thing for Nash to do to begin with, and since all of the current recordings start with dash, I'll just leave them on. So we're experimenting with these three things. Uh, may I put back in the super and one of this, so we'll put it down to two things. So it's obviously easy to do this. I mean, he dashed, I can do stuff. 
But you don't want to show you can on the first frame. Oh wait, there was that jab from before. The jab solves a lot of things, right? If I'm mashing correctly, the jab solves a ton of things. Great, I can remember how to do this now. But wait, what made us not use this jab? And then you have to remember what made you not use the jab. The reason we didn't just use the jab, even though it does sort of work on it, is this. It's because if you mash the jab quote unquote incorrectly, Nash gets to go back to the very, very first gambit he could always use. So, the space of things isn't that bad. I mean, it's not like most Nash players will love to dash in on you. But they have a way of looking at it. They can go, well, what if, knowing that I could buffer things, the Ryu player doesn't want to risk the jump back at all? Maybe a specific type of player. They can look at the type of player you are and decide, hmm, this player isn't going to do that. This player isn't going to jump back heavy kick when I try to start a round. So I'm just going to kick them. The other problem with this entire plan is that Ryu gives up space and Nash doesn't. But now we're going back to looking at it from Ryu's side. What can Ryu do that doesn't give up space? Well, Ryu's options at the beginning of a round aren't usually that great. He can't do his shoryukens because they're sort of risky. If he blocks, he can punish, but he can only punish if Nash dashes and not if Nash just does regular... Let's show that again. If Nash just does this one, Ryu can't do a lot. If you see anything that is effectively counter-hitting, it means that Ryu didn't really have an option. That Nash probably could have hit something. And Ryu would have been in a bad situation. Because you're seeing him start this over and over, obviously. A better way to do this would be perhaps to block after that. So let's block after that. And just stay there. So we're doing the playback on just three. He will do medium kit sight and then block. And for now, now I have to start thinking from Ryu's side. Well, if I chose to just block for whatever reason, now what? What if I do this? Hmm, maybe not. But what did we learn here? Well, for one thing, that move, while it does start up in 10, takes a little bit of time to reach you on certain spacings. I'm not sure the very first active frame can hit you if you're there. But it doesn't seem that I can do this. No matter how fast I throw this out, maybe a heavy one will always work. But then it never relies on me being ready at the beginning of a battle to throw out the move on the literal first frame that Ryu can do so. Is this something you want to be risking? However, since EX starts up faster than that, and knocks down, the risk is less. And Nash doesn't have a whole lot of great solutions to that. Except, oh wait, Moonsault. Which is what we were trying to avoid to begin with. But rather than making this super complicated, 
we're going to assume that he, the player isn't going to Moonsault. That you're defensive, and whatever. However, this costs you meter and gains you nothing if the Nash doesn't move. Or if the Nash bats off. So... Who's coming out on top in that particular way? Well... Ryu can be said to be coming out on top if the Nash is an aggressive player and likely to try something of that nature. But you can never tell what a player's opening gambit will be because they have so much time to think about it. They can just pick randomly. They could literally take the time between rounds to yell to their cousin to see which direction their cat is facing. It really doesn't matter. The thing that makes a person do a particular opening gambit is based almost completely on their whim if the opening gambits are of approximately equal value. They'll either think about you as a player, or they'll figure out something about the character, or they'll just pick randomly and do something that you would never have expected and it didn't seem to make any sense to you. Most playable will at least look at their meter to decide and they will look at your meter, but beyond that, the decision-making process isn't something you can get into someone else's head and tell unless you've got a lot of experience playing against that player. So, we know that if Ryu has meter, Nash can't easily use most of his stuff if Ryu also decides to just throw out the ES Fireball, but Nash is probably still in a good place if Ryu does throw that out because Ryu's lost meter and Nash hasn't. He just blocks it. Depending on the style of players in the matchup, that might favor you. If you are going up against a zoning Nash, the very first action should be, let's see if I can throw out the EX Hadouken. Because at the very least I'll get a tiny amount of chip damage, and at the worst they'll do like Moonsault or something and I'll die. But I can probably handle them because that sort of match moves at a pace that most Ryu players can handle. And raw super, dash up super is no longer an issue, dashes in general are not an issue if you have that. So now we've seen two options from Ryu. Ryu jumps back or he throws an ES fireball. And Nash does a dash into one of the Sonnet Scythes, or he does medium kick Sonnet Scythe straight. There aren't that many other options here. None that specifically count as an opening gambit, because an opening gambit is always an attack that risks something, or a movement that risks something. Against certain characters, for example, jump back is not a risk at all, and therefore it never matters. Against other characters, standing still is a risk. There are very few of these characters, but they do exist. So we're going to keep this one as medium kick block. And let's take a track into what 2 is. Now we're moving into a more advanced concept, so I won't spend too much time on it. Mostly it's been repetition so far though, so I figure that it would be nice to move on to something else. Once a player has decided their intended opening gambit, the rest of the match tends to matter directly after that, in ways that are more dependent on things like the space. Assume that both players did some opening gambit where no one got hurt. Who's winning? The person that's winning is the person with the most space almost all of the time. So what can Nash do with space once he gets it? I can't force Nash to do anything specific after one or the other. This is where the bots sort of feel, fall short and you should probably ask your friends to help you. But let's assume that the opponent blocks something namely the dash up scythe. Let's assume that they manage to get away from dash up scythe by staying still and they do nothing whatsoever. So dash up scythe I believe is in 
action one at the moment. And as I said, I unfortunately don't have much option here. I can do certain things in terms of... Let's try this instead. Let's record action four as just blocking for long enough for me to talk about it. Could be super boring, but at least if I notice this is coming, I can stop the round start. And now I need to turn that on, I believe. Yes. So now, look at the spacing between the two of them. Ryu can hit a button here, but Nash is blocking. Can Ryu throw? No. The throw won't hit. That's interesting to note. Oh, Nash, be nice. Good. So he's gone straight back to blocking, and... The question is, could Nash throw from here? Hmm. I could put a throw at the end of that very long thing and see what happens. While I talk about it, in fact. So, there are certain characters whose throw works better than others. If you were not aware of this, you can look up in frame data and certain other apps that will tell you some approximation of the character's throw range, even though this may be a little bit hard to understand if you're not too familiar with the game overall. But some people definitely can. And while their forward and back throws don't tend to be different, you can gain a little bit of space by moving forward into the forward throw. So there are very, very tiny specific ways to make this work out for you. So the question is, can Nash reach for you with his throw? And we'll see in a couple seconds that he does not hit him either. So, technically, no one's won here. Since Nash is negative, Nash shouldn't be the one to hit a button here. Unless he's pretty sure the Ryu player is going to keep blocking for some reason. And therefore, you don't really have to worry about it. But if Nash does just the regular... Sonic Scythe, which I believe I left in 3. Yes, I did. Now he just blocks here. And now Ryu has to think, okay, um, what do I do? Clearly nothing I have is gonna reach. In fact, he's at a range where most of the things he could do will end in stuff like that. Because he could go right over his head. And so on. That doesn't help. So Ryu is here thinking about how do I stop this from happening to me? Because he does you don't want to move away from Nash or try to move away from Nash. That could be bad. Because Nash actually has a really good long sweep. And while I wouldn't say that it's likely that he can do that that way... One, two, three, four, five... A good long sweep goes a long way. So let's leave the play back as it was before. Can he hit with the sweep from here? You'd think that he can't. In fact, I'm assuming he can't. But... With Nash, you can be fairly sure that he has the option of trying certain things. And you would therefore think, okay, my turn, time to move forward. And then realize, oh, wait, that was not a good idea because the Nash player now has a total sweep on me. You say, I'll jump, but that's a pretty easy space to get anti aired from. Plus, it doesn't even work all that well. Nash's crouch hurt box upward is Probably not that different from most characters, but not that great either, in terms of trying to take him out. Okay, well you still got him, but he's definitely a range where he can definitely see you coming and use most of his anti-airs if he wants to. So, 
the thought would then be, well, okay, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I'm fine. But are you? Because rather than doing that, now I'm going to put back the dash throw problem. And I'm going to turn on just one and two. Is it one and two that I want? No. Three and two. So when Nash does this, remember, Ryu's always fine. You can just keep blocking. Wait, now he starts to look as if he might be able to do something. If he hits three and then does two, am I in trouble? Because your mind is already on the idea that you need to defend. Hmm, seems it missed it. So let's try it again. Oh, right, because the sun is either too poorly done. Fine, I will give you a little space because I don't care about the timing, so. Let's hit light kick first, and dash and throw. Light kick doesn't move from anywhere, so it's fine. I only hit the button in order to start the recording. There were other ways to do that, but I'm not going into that now. Did I give you enough space for it? Now obviously, given that level of delay, you could easily react to the throw. But not all of us react to throws that easily. Especially when we don't know for sure what's coming after it. So now we're looking at the situation where Nash has a spacing at which is good and easy to dash and throw. Or technically, dash and hit a different button. So the spacing we have isn't at advantage for Ryu. So if Nash knows that you're the type of player who just blocks the Sonnet side, hmm, he can be a problem. So the final perspective from the Ryu side, since Nash basically knows what he's going to do, he's either going to do light kick side, the medium kick side, and hope you block it, and because you blocking it is relatively in Nash's favor, Ryu has to do something. Fortunately, Ryu is a character that can usually do something. But, note what happens. Actually, if Nash is in a really good place, Ryu doesn't necessarily recover in time to do exactly that, and for some people this execution is not so easy. Plus, Ryu takes long enough to recover from doing that, that anything else that Nash does can become a threat. Oh wait, I need the dashing one. Okay. That was too fast. So we've got... Did I actually curve? No. Let's be sure. Oh good! It appears that a dash up throw does not catch Ryu even if he parries. But that wasn't the only thing that Nash could have done, so let's see. I think he had dash into scythe. That's good. But that doesn't help, and it counter hits, so mm, it's not really more helpful. So your best bet is still to block, and this is why opening gambits are a thing. You are taking the risk by parrying, but parrying doesn't necessarily give you enough to make it a good idea. But here's something that might be a good idea. Just neutral jumping. But just neutral jumping has two flaws. 
that, even though that does turn out in your favor most of the time. And the fact that if a Nash notices you do that, they will probably move out. Plus, this is technically only hitting the dash up throw, as I noted. I can't promise you anything from there. But the idea is that if you figure out what Nash is trying to do, and we are keeping the ideas of what Nash is trying to do, namely to dash up and do a light kick, sorry, a medium kick scythe or a heavy kick scythe, But now we see something else. A neutral jump is different because the timing is different. So heavy kick scythe doesn't get away in the same way it did for the bat jump. This sort of thing is the condensed version of all of the interactions you have in any fighting game. This is what is going on at nearly any moment where one character is not knocked down. The question is how much meter you have, how plus you were at the last time someone blocked a move, and your reaction speed. The rest of it is just a question of how fast you can react to any specific thing in your own way. And your own way is what the gambit itself is about. Ryu can give up space, Ryu can maybe land a hit, and Ryu can be knocked out of his stuff by Nash being savvy in time, like that. I'm not going to go any further on this at the moment. As I said, I only needed to show one more thing. I hope that this has helped you to understand Many concepts actually, neutral, frame data, risk and reward, and so on, because a lot of this game is re based on what happens in the first two or three seconds, because if you do get knocked down, if you are the one that suffers, then your opponent is at advantage. They're flatly at every possible advantage, especially in first round. Even if you block, they're technically at advantage. And you'll note quickly that this doesn't even hit this way, so... Ryu's happy that he hits that, but... Hmm? What do we get from there? Can we heavy kick hit? Maybe? Let's try turning on just that one for now. As we get ready to close out. I believe it is one. Yes, it is. There. So, you have to know a lot of things in this spacing. Knowing that you can do that, for example, but not sweep, makes a huge difference to this matchup. Because sweep is repunishable, and even with Nash having recovered in time, I'm trying to block. I promise you I'm trying to block. So a Nash that knows that, and knows that their opponent is just discovering the opening gambit, the best thing for them to do is try to hit you again. But if you know this, then you have an out. I don't think he even has anything else that hits. No, I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, wait, there we go. Fortunately, that is harder to time, but also a knockdown. Whereas the kick is not. So all of these little things, just imagine this moment. Imagine the moment where you as the Nash player have done what you do against everyone, or that the Ryu has done this a couple of times, just jump back, not hit the kick and you've managed to hit them. 
and you're like, okay, well, I'm doing it again. Remember that peelers only get a chance to think about the opening gambit every now and again. This isn't too terrifying. It's discouraging, but it's not terrifying. Life goes away. But at the beginning of a round, Ryu doesn't have any V-meter. He can't cancel from this into anything. You're still on your feet. But a really high level Ryu player, who sees you do that all the time, if you go and fight someone like that in a tournament, and they're ready for you, this is going to happen. And then, they're going to have Tatsumikis and rush down pressure, and you are going to die without probably getting to do anything if they're really good and under have a good read on you. You've gone from here, from doing the thing you always do at the beginning of the round, to dead. That's how important this is. And that's how every interaction in this game is. If you can't get out of pressure. And I'll note that if they did that at the very beginning of a round in, let's say, a first to three set or something, the very first round, you have no meter to do anything about it either. Not that you normally have anything to do on Nash in the first place. But a Ryu player can basically improve their game against Nash considerably by just recognizing whether or not the Nash player knows this. And if the problem with the Nash player is that they're too aggressive or that they don't handle this well, The Ryu player is at automatic advantage, just off knowing which of these things is going to get them killed, and which is not. There are many other parts to this, and I encourage you to seek out any information you can about what an opening gambit is, especially if you hear it mentioned on a stream you happen to be watching. Replay the stream, rewatch the match. Anything you can find to think about that exact moment because probably the opening gambit happened without much delay of frames at the beginning of the match and it's probably reproducible. So your question to yourself is, how did this happen and why did this happen this way? Why is this important? And so on. If you realize that you ended up losing a round basically on the first action, and you basically just got knocked down for doing something that you thought was a good idea normally and then destroyed, go look at it. Go figure out what you're supposed to do against that character. Because once you've worked out the opening gambit, you can also work out what you should do in any spacing on the screen that looks similar enough to that one with everyone dancing around. What is the thing you should probably do there to get your space back, to put more pressure on your opponent, anything. So with that, this is Rillian with our How to Improve session, signing off for the night.